here we are again. It took me a long time to get the rifle that I have here. It's a, it's a Steyr Zephyr uh, two, and a lot of requests, uh, especially from um, the UK. And uh, Adrian, if you're watching, sorry it took so long to get to um, having this rifle in studio. Beautifully made 22. Uh, no one could argue with that. And interestingly, I can't find a Zephyr 2 anywhere on this 22. But anyway, it says Steyr Arms, Austria. So we'll look at that. I'll just leave it here. Uh, but I also had a few other things to talk to you about. And um, it, it's probably a good idea for me to, out of respect for all of you viewers who write me. So whether or not you're aware of it, uh, Canada, the government of Canada passed some uh, quite predatory gun laws. I don't pretend to know the details of what's what with the laws. It looks like they were passed without Parliament, which is unusual. Some kind of mechanism like an order in council. And uh, going back in time, I remember receiving a lot of correspondence from New Zealand where people were also subjected to all kinds of laws. And those also looked like quite predatory laws against just law-abiding people who own guns. And our New Zealand viewers will know uh, better than I do what exactly was done to them. But the Canadian laws uh, sounds to me like Canada sort of closed the door on handguns. So the handguns that are in that country um, can stay under some terms and conditions, but no more handguns. Uh, so I, anyway, people wrote me these uh, it's sometimes quite meaningful and quite long um, letters because they're, you know, they're upset by this, especially veterans. Uh, but I'll, I'll read some of these and, you know, you can always fast forward. But um, so one guy wrote, evidently the government of Canada believes uh, that Canadians cannot be trusted. Uh, interesting interpretation. And I probably would add, um, cannot be trusted with handguns. Now, um, I tried to tie these messages or, or um, sometimes emails, sometimes just notes. Uh, together into some kind of meaningful format. So one fellow wrote, um, how can they pass any of these um, so-called laws? And, and naturally, most of the people on this channel are going to be pro-gun. But I try to be unbiased and listen to everybody's opinion, uh, because that's what we should all do. Anyway, uh, he wrote, um, Canada doesn't need really any of these anti-gun laws. There's almost nobody there. And he further wrote, there are only four people per square kilometer in Canada. And actually I checked that. And yeah, there are only four people per square kilometer in Canada. Now that's slightly misleading, uh, but not in a bad way uh, because naturally people cluster in cities. And I guess somewhere along the line, the government of Canada probably didn't visualize um, enough cities. They're, they're, the people are quite packed in. But nevertheless, technically speaking, it's only four people per square kilometer. And just for fun, um, I thought I would check some other numbers. So I googled it and uh, Canada, four people per square kilometer, no more handguns can be imported there. And handguns, which are a personal asset, are in many cases and other restricted firearms are frozen so the government there correct me if i'm wrong has frozen assets but this might be part of kind of a recent trend to freeze assets all over the place and again i don't want to go into details but getting back to the population density per square kilometer listen to these numbers Monaco, 19,361 people per square mile. Singapore, 8,000 per square mile. Bahrain, 2,182 per square mile, and so on and so forth. Lebanon, 667 people per square mile. Uh, the United States of America is further down the list at 61 people per square mile. Anyway, um, does this really tie in with gun control? Well, it depends how you think um, but 
it, Canada is a huge country with very few people. Nevertheless, for whatever reason, uh, I guess the government feels in a way that the people can't be trusted, as that first fellow wrote. And then there were a lot of other um, notes relating one subject to another subject, which is not necessarily always sound logic. Uh, but one fellow wrote quite clearly, a veteran, uh, fighting wars in faraway places um, in the name of freedom uh, while executing freedom step by step um, in Canada. So I thought, well, uh, that probably is what's happening in a lot of Western countries. There's a lot of talk about freedom, and yet freedom is being eroded um, yeah, sort of at home. Anyway, I'm sorry if I didn't read your note. There, there are just hundreds of really smart people out there. Uh, and I, what, what do I think? Well, I think, you know, Canadians, I think, are kind of an amazing people. And you, I, you can't really, it's, it's that thing. Not all of the people all of the time. So I have a hunch that this story isn't over. I'm not even sure about the, the um, legislative means that were used to accomplish this, this ban. And uh, quietly and slowly, I think things maybe will happen. And actually, I was talking to a fellow who knows a lot more than I do about this. And, and he said that, yeah, I expect something to happen. So we'll see maybe some kind of constitutional challenge. Anyway, for all the Canadian viewers, I think it's one of those situations where you have to, you know, hang in there and eventually something hopefully will change. You've, I think one tends to um, equate gun ownership with freedom. And I know that's true because I received letters from places where they're not allowed to own guns, but they have YouTube, which is great. And yeah, there is a relationship between or an association, let's say between uh, guns and freedom. So it's probably not a good idea to limit freedom or li limit gun ownership. Uh, but anyway, like I've said before, libraries have been written about this and I wanna now put that aside and get back to the guns. So um, yeah, it, it, there was a, there was a, a Zephyr one uh, some years ago, I think at least 20 years ago. Uh, this is made in Austria. And everything about this rifle, as far as I can tell, is about as good as a 22 Sporter can get. You know that we looked at the Winchester Model 52, and um, excellent rifle. Is this better or worse? Well, I wish I had my 52, but a fellow uh, bought it along with my uh, Abel's. Um, oh, I wanted to mention, a lot of you ask, you know, where, where do you sell your rifles because you can't keep them all I usually get them and then many times sell them you know at a loss or whatever um, you can't keep them all so yeah you could check Maynard's auction house in Vancouver uh, they they uh, actually have an upcoming auction and you'll see some of the pieces from my collection there you can see that Steyer went all out. This is Germanic style. It's got, you know, the folded linen cheek piece. It's got fish scale checkering. The trigger is excellent. The, I think a lot of the time the attraction of a gun is actually in the stock. Because how, how good can you make steel look? Now they have, a, you know, a typical um, bolt handle here, which looks really good. And it'll probably remind you of that 300 Holland and Holland, which I took out. They've used that stuff for a long time. So that's the Holland and Holland. And you can kind of see that these, these, um, these rifles are related. And obviously that's a deliberate thing. And it has, um, you know, similar bolt shroud. Of course, the, the Holland and Holland in my hands has that rotary magazine. Uh, but I thought that's, you know, kind of a nice pair, actually, if you go for that kind of thing. So getting back to the Zephyr, um, which, as I said at the beginning, is uh, it, there is no reference to Zephyr, but it, it is Zephyr. Uh, Steyr Arms Austria, as I said. 
Um, I took it to do some groups. Oh, if you buy one of these, you'll probably wonder uh, about these sights. So it arrived like a lot of rifles do <laughs> with no sights. But I didn't want to clutter up the receiver with a scope and all the rest of that. Uh, so I had these sights kicking around and you might find this interesting. These are just Sako sights and whenever I come across, you know, decent sights, I buy them. Very easy to install, but I, 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 I could drill in Tapo, but why? Uh, so if you, if you want to install sights, and I've done this many times, uh, you'll find that on a lot of high power rifles, they, they no matter what you use, they sort of come off. But on 22s and milder rifles, uh, this is the secret potion. And you have to be careful working with it. You know, my fingers are still black and I, I have to clean up the sights, but these are on, I tested them. I mean, this is some kind of incredible adhesive. And with these iron sights, I could shoot without, you know, all of the things associated, bases and so on. Also, it's harder for you to see the action, um, which is quite slick. And um, again, I was going to go into more detail, but we'll save that for another video. So I shot the groups that I could with, with this beautiful rifle and everything on this works kind of like, you know, it has that, it has that feeling of a, of a timekeeping piece, that beautiful mechanism and everything clicks in place. It's kind of, kind of an effortless rifle to operate. And the design of the stock, um, well, you know, Austrians have been making rifles for centuries. And actually, you know, uh, what a beautiful country Austria is. And as a footnote, if you punch in Austria, um, you'll see that Austria is a non-aligned country. It's actually in their constitution, so they can't pose a they chose not to pose a threat. They, their position can't be misinterpreted. I just um, mentioned that because it's actually um, good to think about. Anyhow, yeah, so I'm not sure where the factory is. Um, I, you know, I like Salzburg and, you know, all of the Sound of Music places. Vienna's beautiful, but wherever they are, they know how to put out a great 22. And um, yeah, is it better than the first Zephyr? Or I don't, I'm not sure. I, you know, in the past I didn't have a channel, so I would buy the rifles and shoot them. I remember the Zephyr being a wonderful 22, but I have a hunch this is probably just as good, if not better. And they really went all out. I, you know, a lot of what you see here is now being accomplished by lasers and machines, all these slopes and so on. Um, it it really is excellent, and they they use a decent piece of wood. Uh, you know, it's not the fanciest, but why would it need to be? One great thing worth mentioning is they narrowed down the forend, which gives you that delicate. Uh, feeling when you're shooting and you can see the hammer forging marks just like on that 300 Holland and Holland they're they're a little bit more obscure here and um, yeah that that adhesive is really something else if you if you do attempt something like this you have to get everything lined up which isn't necessarily easy and then um, and then and then apply the adhesive and it dries fairly quickly, but not as quickly as, as it seems. Anyway, we'll set that down and I'll show you the, the lot of clunking. Um, that's the target. So uh, my, you know, I like the iron sights, but you can see it. Well, it's hard to see the, uh, this was at, we measured it. Um, this was at, um, at 60 feet. So uh, that's kind of small game distance, I thought. Uh, we had to blacken those circles just with the uh, markers so that I could see them. And uh, as you can tell, I have to adjust the sights, but I didn't have time to do that. So it's, sh it's shooting low. And considering that this was iron sights and, um, you know, not the best conditions, I, 
I, I mean, it's safe to say this is an accurate rifle, and I'm sure with a scope and a rest and a better shooter, uh, you could accomplish all kinds of things. Having said that, uh, every time I talk about accuracy, I do get notes from folks saying, uh, you know, you're the blind leading the blind. Um, maybe, maybe so. Um, but I don't have, you know, target 22s, or maybe I do, but I, I don't have time to shoot them. Anyway, I think it's about the best sporter on the market uh, from Europe. I haven't seen really anything from... Germany lately. Uh, there's the Tika. They're nice, but nothing like this. this is a totally different uh, level of craftsmanship. I did want to mention, though, and we'll look at this again. Here's what I think is probably one of the best, if not the best, American-made rimfires. This, this one here is a Cooper Model 57 um, M. Oh yeah, because this is 17 HMR. I'll turn it around for you. 17 HMR. And, uh, you know, again, the action has that, yeah, perfection machining. But you probably know Cooper. And actually the accuracy of this particular rifle is, uh, I think maybe I told you before, it's, it's just uh, astonishing accuracy but you know they know how to make barrels and i was shooting this one off a of bench whereas that one like these, these are offhand groups which may not mean much to you but it means a lot to me that's uh that's that's uh, i thought I, I thought i'd have more dispersion you know because you're moving but uh yeah those sites are good uh I, I can i can see what's what i'll keep them on uh, for now anyway and if you want to remove them, um, well, we can talk about that another time. But it's not difficult, and there's not a trace with the with this uh, 480. There's nothing there. And then uh, just to sort of have one more rifle to show you, I brought out uh, a, this this rifle. You may not be familiar with. Um, it, somehow that Steyr reminded me of this rifle. Uh, anyway, it's it's made by. J.G. Landmann, and it actually says Preetz Holst, and I actually looked up that on Google Translate, and it says made in West Germany, so this was still when Germany was divided, and this one, and I, you know, obviously I've shot it, it's a top eject, you can see, and um, with the split bridge in the back, and the magazine release reminds me a lot of the Walther P1, you know, where you pull back on this, and then then the magazine comes out, I could easily get it to fall out like that. And this one, uh, again, it has um, that glass hard steel of, of uh, Mausers. And I, again, I'm not sure why it is the steel feels different um, the, way it, the way the action runs, but uh, some of you would probably know. Anyway, magnificent rifle and this one, as every rifle should have, does have excellent sights. I guess I'm missing the front sight hood. And again, it, you, you know, you can hit whatever all day long with, with this one. And same is true for the, for the Shire Zephyr. So I guess we'll uh, finish up with that. People ask me, what was I shooting? I almost always shoot this stuff just because it's so quiet. Um, I, I've shown you my screwdriver before, <laughs> Brownells Magna Tip Grade Screwdriver. I don't know why it's here, and then a Bohr Light Winchester. I have a hunch that's just a license name. Anyway, that's here. People ask me about all these things. Uh, we uh, some of the guns behind me. I forget what they are, but let's finish up with a final look at this Zephyr Two, and. Um, I think you, know, you have to agree. I mean, maybe the factory could do us all a favor and install some sites uh, with 22s. I guess you maybe you need a scope all the time, but I, I don't know. It's not a very long range cartridge. On the other hand, everybody has uh, ideas. It's also available in, I think, 22 Magnum and probably 17 HMR. In fact, I'm pretty sure. All right, well, uh, does it have a set trigger I never even checked some no it doesn't have a set trigger sometimes they they do you just push forward on them anyway if yeah if you 
are after like a top flight 22. I don't think you can beat this one. And, you know, I have no association with this company. It's got a very nice feature and that's this pad, which prevents uh, slippage. And uh, I think that's a, that's a great feature. All right, well, that's a, a lot to cover. Everything from, from Canadian gun laws to bore lights and 22s. We should really split these up. Also, some, some younger viewers asked, you know, about whether they should start a channel on different things. And I always say to everybody, well, tr do it, try. I'm probably not the best example, you know, not the best cameras, not the best sound equipment. Uh, but don't let that deter you. It, it, it can just be a real um, sharing of information, which I think is the whole purpose. But yeah, if you have any idea, just I know it, it, uh, it takes, I guess, some courage for you, but just go ahead and you know, if it works, it's great. And if it doesn't work, it's great. At least you tried. Um, okay, well, that's about it. Thanks for listening and uh, being here and take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you next, next time.